There is a certainty to life in Roberts County, here in the Texas Panhandle. The uninterrupted sky above, the sweeping plains around, generation after generation, very little has changed. This one downtown stoplight always flashes yellow on one side and red on the other. And you can almost set your watch to the trains. They race through town so often, people here say they don't even notice them. Here in Roberts County, the population is around 900. And in the 2016 election, almost all of them voted for Donald Trump. 95%. That was the highest county percentage in the entire country. So the rest of the world took notice. The press descended on this quiet community, and then they all left. We, however, came back again and again over the last year. See, we wanted to spend time with folks on the ground here to really understand what matters to them and to see what they thought about President Trump's first year. So one month after he took office, we came here and met Mitchell Locke. I was born here, raised here. And my great, great grandfather helped found the town. It's a small town. Everybody knows each other. It's a slow life, and I enjoy that. Mitchell is a fifth generation cattle rancher. In this family business, father and son work side by side. Come and just paint these and go on and feed those wherever you meet them. You and your dad get to work together every day. It's good. It's, sometimes it's hard because you have, like, where do you draw the line from, like, father-son to employer-employee? Like, he called me at 6 o'clock this morning wanting to talk about work. Sure. And, like, on, what did Chris, you say? I said, I will talk about this at work, and I hung out the phone. The Locks Ranch, like others in this area, is vast. <laughs> These cows do not look excited to see us. <laughs> Their land stretches thousands of acres, and it's worth millions of dollars but money is still tight. Most of what they earn goes back into the business. Another chunk goes to pay down debt. And there's only enough for Mitchell to pull a salary. But if President Trump can push through tax cuts, all that could change. Hillary Clinton presidency might have destroyed our business. She would have raised the tax and we already struggle to pay the taxes. My dad's 72 years old and when he dies, we would have had to pay the value of 50% of our ranch, something that he's worked his entire life for, to pass down to his kids. We're trying to make you look pretty. Get your ear pierced. So Mitchell voted for Trump, a man he says he didn't even like, but who promised to get rid of the estate tax. I think he's a buffoon. I think he's a blowhard. His policies will help us more, way more, than what Hillary Clinton's would have. Voting for him helped me and my own out, and that's who I have to look out for. Me, my family, my parents, my community. Mitchell introduced us to life here in Roberts County and what's important to the people who actually live here. But that's just one man's opinion. There were 549 other voters in the county. So we'll come back to find out if his family and neighbors feel the same way that he does. So we are back in Roberts County, Texas. Um, last time we were here, it had been one month in the Trump presidency. Now it's June, so it's been almost five months, and a lot has happened. And we will soon begin the construction of a great, great wall along our southern border. I issued an executive order to temporarily suspend immigration from places where it cannot safely occur. I, Neil M. Gorsuch, do solemnly swear. This is a repeal and a replace of Obamacare. President Trump has informed FBI Director James Comey that he has been terminated. Why did you fire Director Comey? Because he wasn't doing a good job. Robert Mueller, the former director of the FBI, has been appointed to be the special counsel looking in to Russia's interference in the 2016 election. The entire thing has been a witch hunt, and uh, there is no collusion. It's the first weekend of June, which means time for the annual cow calling festival in Miami, the only town in Roberts County. And yes, that is the right way to say it. It's all about the fun, man. There's food, family fun, 
and a competition to imitate the old-fashioned way to call cattle. Hey, how are you? This is Steve Porter. He was one of last year's champions. Steve has lived in the Texas Panhandle his entire life. They're gonna put me in the movie. <laughs> he served in the military, married his college sweetheart, and raised his kids in the neighboring town of Pampa. Everybody around here knows Steve, and everybody knows he loves to sing. Somewhere in the West, I'll build a little nest and let the rest of the world go by. Now retired, he spends most of his time tending his farm in Roberts County. He really liked Donald Trump's message, and he really disliked Hillary Clinton. His dog Buddy agrees. Yeah. Buddy, what do you think about Hillary? Hillary? <laughs> Hillary? Oh, what do you think about Hillary? Hillary Clinton? Oh, my goodness. I feel that he is a strong leader, and he is putting forth uh, a forceful uh, image of our country, reform immigration, reform uh, our medical system, reform our tax system. Were you a fan of Mr. Trump's plan to build a physical wall? Not really. Uh, I just never have believed that that wall is going to work. You know, I don't necessarily agree with everything he's done. What do you disagree with? I, I disagree with him doing those tweets without asking some of his smart people. He ran on this idea of banning people from entering the country if they were Muslim. Mm -hmm. Did you agree with that? It's not the most popular religion with me because what it's done is it's put its women down to a third rate. You know that's not the religion as a whole, right? I mean, there are millions of Muslims right here in America who don't practice it that way. Sure. My first roommate in college was full-blown Islamic. Mm -hmm. And we, his name was Fawaz, we called him Fuzz. And every once in a while, you know, he'd throw out his little magic carpet there between our beds. And he, his prayer rug? He, well, I called it his magic carpet, you know. I loved Fuzz. He told me all about his world of Saudi Arabia. And when I saw those planes, excuse me, when I saw those planes fly into those buildings and they said that they were Muslims and I thought that can't be people that are fuzzes people. They are the, they got to be like him. I was shocked. Five minutes from Steve Porter's house, across the train tracks, we meet Sonia Lopez. But I'm Amna. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. meet you. Sonia immigrated from Mexico in 2005 to join her then boyfriend. They got married soon after. Their son Noel is now a junior at the local high school. Sonia says her family is one of just two Mexican-American families in town. Moving here, she says, was tough, but worth it. And I came and I was like thinking, if I like it over there, my English wasn't no good right now. Did you speak any English? Uh, just a little bit. My English was a um, big wall. And after I started learning, it was wonderful. Sonia runs her own cleaning business. She's not a U.S. citizen yet, so she couldn't vote in the last election but her husband could, and he voted for Donald Trump. For me and my opinion, and I guess it's the opinion on all the people here, Hillary Clinton didn't show too much uh, honesty, you know. People here, they are people that they have their own business, mm -hmm. a cow business or a cattle business, and uh, they want the country growing, economic, mm -hmm. you know. And when you heard Mr. Trump say things about Mexican. people come, coming from Mexico. Did it I bother mean, you at I, all? I, I, don't, I don't like nobody talk bad about anybody. Uh, the only concern to me is if he separate the families because a strong country is because they have a good families. And uh, he's our president, but I pray for him to, to change his uh, heart and his mind a little bit for a good. So back when Mitchell told us that everyone here knows each other, he wasn't kidding. Sonia's house is about five minutes that way, 
right here is where some of her clients, Aaron and Chad, live. Now, Aaron is Mitchell's sister, and she's married to Chad. He's a rancher like Mitchell, but he's also the mayor of Miami. You got all that? Chad and Aaron breeding were already raising teens Austin and Blake, Chad's kids from a previous marriage. Then, eight weeks ago, these little guys, twins Lillian and Wyatt, arrived. So the whole town has been chipping in. Our community is great. They brought us meals for, I think it was closer to a month. We've heard so much from people here about community. Where does that community begin or end? I think everybody in this country is generally a good person that would go out and help somebody in need and would bend over backwards to put food on a family's table if they needed it. But they completely resent being told, you're gonna give me so much money so I can go over here and give these people this money. Okay, so this is the itemized that was just for me. So money is definitely on Chad and Aaron's minds. And being able to afford health care for their growing family on a teacher's salary has Aaron stressed out. Okay. Education funding is not what it was. So school districts, we're not getting our yearly raises, but mm -hmm. our health insurance is going up every year. We're going broke paying health care premiums. I mean, broke. I can't be a stay-at-home mom because I have to work for insurance. So yes, Chad and Aaron say cheaper health care would be great. So would tax cuts and an estate tax repeal. That's why they voted for Trump. Oops. But they're not exactly hanging on every headline to see what happens. I mean, there's some things where I'm like, ugh, this again, and you know, I'll change the channel. You what know? makes you go, ugh? Like the Comey stuff, like I really don't care. It doesn't affect me. Yeah. Really, it's boring to me. Kind of like days of our lives. You can watch it this week, and then if you miss the whole week and start over next week, you really hadn't missed anything. His sister may not be tracking the ups and downs of the news cycle under President Trump, but Mitchell is more tuned in. So he appointed a Supreme Court justice. Yes, I, I like Gorsuch too. You do? I do. Why do you like him? I don't like activist judges, and I don't think that he will be a very activist judge. We haven't seen tax reform yet. No. Are you worried if we won't see it? Because that no. was one of the main reasons you voted no. for it, Oh, yeah. Right? No, I'm not worried if, because if he doesn't do it, I mean, he's an idiot if he doesn't start forcing the issue. Five months in, tax reform still looms large for Mitchell and a lot of folks here in Roberts County. Specifically, they're banking on Trump's pledge to ditch the estate tax. Whether or not they can keep their land in the family, they say, depends on that. There's a lot to this lifestyle that people want to pass on to their kids, and it's hard when you have this outside entity that wants to come constantly be pulling pieces away from you. If you've heard or read anything about the estate tax, which some also call the death tax, you probably think it only applies to the very rich. And for the most part, you'd be right. But the locks on paper are part of that group because of the value of this land. They're one of fewer than 100 small businesses and farms across our entire country affected by this one specific tax, a tax that the family says could devastate their legacy. That night, three generations gather for dinner at Mitchell's house. Blake, where's all the bacon and the salad? He and his wife, Ashley, love doting on their baby niece and nephew. For years, they've been trying to start their own family. We've been dealing with infertility and we are going to have to pay out of pocket if we want to continue. And um, our insurance won't cover that kind of thing. It could cost us up to $25,000 out of pocket. It's hard on her. More than me, we're really focused on just kind of each other. So Mitchell and Ashley keep hoping for their own family one day. Mitchell's father hopes he'll one day have something to leave them. And I think another thing that affects our families here is the estate tax. I'd like to see the death tax repeal. Uh, it just puts a burden on on our family and everything. We work for, pay taxes to get where we are. Is it important to you that the next generation of locks and, and, and all your grandchildren on, on both sides stay here? Well, I, I guess at that time we'll leave it to them and whatever they decide to do and whatever they want to do for a little while, but it'll always be here. But to make sure of that and settle the future of their family business, 
The locks need President Trump to make good on his campaign promise to repeal the estate tax. In the months ahead, they'll see if he can deliver. It's fall when we make our next trip back to Roberts County. We tried to return sooner, but things got busy. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. National Security Advisor Michael Flynn, gone. Press Secretary Sean Spicer, gone. Chief of Staff Reince Priebus, gone. And finally today, Steve Bannon. Thank you. Thank you. On McCain, he casts his vote with a thumbs down. Violent clashes between white nationalists and counter-protesters in the streets of Charlottesville. I think there's blame on both sides. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners to say, get that son of a off the field right now, out, he's fired. We are finally ending the crushing, the horrible, the unfair estate tax. So fall, of course, means football, and football is huge here in Texas, but in small towns like Miami, they don't have enough players to field a full team. So they play six man. It's just six players aside, smaller teams, faster game, shorter game. And tonight is football night in Roberts County. When people here mention community, this is the kind of thing they're talking about. It is very cold and very windy tonight, and the Miami Warriors are losing very badly. But people here show up for each other, and faith, like football, brings them together. Dear Lord, forgive. Every Thursday morning, Steve Porter joins his friends and neighbors for this men's fellowship breakfast in Pampa, the next town over. We thank you for this land that we live in and the freedom that we have. It's like a book club, support group, and Bible study in one, only with coffee, bacon, and today, a New York Times op-ed by David Brooks. The Christian churches have been behind most of the big social movements in American history. They invite me to join the conversation. Did everyone here vote for Trump? Yes. Yeah? We appreciate what Trump's trying to do, and yet at the same time, we cringe at some of the things that are coming out of the White House. There's not a man here who thinks Donald Trump is perfect. No. <laughs> you share these uh, the articles and you're talking about current events, does everyone share the same political views too? I, I think we Pretty share much. core values. We're disappointed uh, in some of our Republicans who don't seem to stand for those core values. Mr. Trump uh, seems to be able to get himself in trouble almost every day, <laughs> not because He's not standing for core values, but if the media would stay out of it, it'd be, be fine. We asked Steve what he thought about all the senior staffers who had already left the Trump White House, all within his first year. They don't seem to fit into the way he wants to do things. And, do you uh, think that's their problem or his? I, I think that's their problem because going into the White House, and working for the president, they need to realize that they need to do it his way. Even if he hasn't seen the policies he wants yet, Steve says he's glad the president is taking a stand on issues like the NFL protests. But that's the feelings of a great deal of Americans that see guys making a minimum of $14 million playing football and won't show respect or kneel to the national anthem or the flag. Do you feel flag. that way too? Yes, I feel that way. They need to show respect and honor the flag and honor our national anthem. Over at Chad's ranch, we hear the same thing. Somebody had to say, we need to stand for the national anthem. The way I see it is they're protesting the anthem. Even though he's in line with the president on this issue, Chad wishes that Trump would spend less time tweeting and more time pushing through his campaign promises, like getting rid of the estate tax. That means that my kids can continue living and 
doing whatever they want to on the ranch. I don't want them to have to go sell half of the ranch just to be able to pay for the taxes on it. Understanding why people here put their hope in Donald Trump requires a better understanding of what it means to live in Roberts County. Life for most here does not track with the rest of America. Roberts County is older and whiter than the rest of the country, better educated than the rest of the country. The average household here earns more than the rest of the country. Stories that trigger a sea change in other parts of America don't even create a ripple out here. Take, for example, the removal of Confederate statues. In 2017, across the country, a debate raged over whether they should remain or be removed. Roberts County has its own Confederate monument right in front of the courthouse. Most people we talked to here didn't even know about it. Not far from the courthouse, we meet up with Sonia. Yes, it's my birthday Happy today. birthday. So cheers to you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. I so have business uh, some is people growing. working for me, like my niece now, she's working with me. So life is good for Sonia. But she's bothered, she says, by President Trump's plan to end DACA, the Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals program. Her fears about families being separated are coming true. And to this day, she says she's never talked to her neighbors about how the president's past remarks about Mexican immigrants affect her. Do you think that they know it bothers you? <laughs> because they know me, you know? They know They know I don't like they talk bad about Mexican people. When I talk to my customers or people in the shores or in the post office, they know, I mean, it's, it's not fair. When, well, like when somebody told me, hey, do you wear um, swimming in the river? Someone joked with you that you swam across a river to come here? And I say, you know what, you have the privilege to born here. Yeah. I didn't. I'm the same like you. I want some better for my kids. I want good education. I want they have a good future. It's not fair because you didn't ask. God didn't give you a citizenship because you were better than me. Ten months into this administration, Sonia is keeping her faith in yeah. President Trump. We need more help. And I'm still praying for that. Let's say mama first. Mama. Say mama. Yeah. Say mama. A few minutes away at Aaron's house, life is consumed by these babies. Lillian and Wyatt are now six months old. And how have you been? You're back at work? Yes. I'm what was back. it like that first day to go back? Awful. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I cried. Yeah. I felt guilty, you know. Did you really? Oh, yeah. We have health insurance, so. <laughs> how much worse is it? 200 more a month. So, kind of, I mean. You feel yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So if I was even to ask you what the latest in the Russia investigation is, you would say? I would say, I have no idea. <laughs> no idea at all. If I have a choice at night, am I going to watch the news or Netflix? Probably Netflix. You know, it's, it's more relaxing. So far, she says, the president oh. seems to be heading in the right direction. I think that right now his priority is good. Um, we'll see where it goes. With if tax not, reform. With yeah. tax reform. If not, um, and if it doesn't happen, then I won't vote for him again. I mean, it's kind of as easy as that. Over at her brother's house that night, Mitchell and Ashley are closing one chapter of their lives. And that's what we'll inject her with. For the last time. Are you excited? <laughs> the shots, the uncertainty, the emotional toll, they all led to a happy ending. And they're having twins. Nothing really mattered at that point anymore. I mean, the just world the feeling could have burned around us, and we still would have been kind of going, eh, and it's, it's all right. Everything's okay. After so many no's and failed attempts, I we just in the back of our mind, we just never thought anything would work. Right now, it's just nice to take a breath before two babies are in the world. <laughs> And those babies will be coming into a complicated world. You mentioned this last time we talked to you that you felt like there was a lot of like the same kind of coverage. Mm -hmm. but I'm burned out on it too because it's been talked about so much. Trump, Russia, Trump, Russia, and nothing came out of it. Nothing happened. If Trump gets arrested or if, if he gets impeached, charges filed against him for some kind of collusion with Ru Russia, you know what? If it doesn't affect me, I don't care. I like, I would get up the next morning and I would do the same thing I did the day before. So do you still see him in the same way? Has anything Absolutely changed over no. the last 10 months? No. No? Still just crossing my fingers that something good comes out of it. Tax cuts or something like that. 
at the same time, you know, a lot of the things that are being said and are already being done coming out of Washington, they may not affect you every day, but they affect a lot of other people, right? Like if they end the DACA program, you're talking about 800,000 people whose lives have already been thrown into incredible uncertainty. I and I don't doubt that. Say that Hillary had been elected and she would have raised in taxes on high income earners and all that, and we would have had to sell our land to the point where it wasn't sustainable for two families and where what we've been trying to build for six generations was over. Should those people that were now, those DACA people, should they be concerned about us in that scenario? Would they have been concerned about me if the, if the uh, roles were reversed? I have to try and take care of me and my own. And that's kind of what it comes down to. And it's coming down to the wire. The Republicans are hard at work on a tax plan but can they give the president one big win before the end of his first year? And special counsel Robert Mueller announcing charges against three of President Trump's former advisors. These massive tax cuts will be rocket fuel. <laughs> Little rocket man, rocket fuel for the American economy. President Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn, you see him entering the courthouse, has pleaded guilty. Dozens of women have come forward accusing Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein of sexual assault and harassment. I will be resigning as a member of the United States Senate. Can you stand here right now and say without a doubt, 100 percent certainty that the more than dozen women who have come forward to accuse this president of misconduct are, are lying? The president has directly uh, responded and said that these allegations are false. It's the second week of December when we return to Roberts County. Christmas is just around the corner. <gasps> Look at your tree! And Sonia Lopez is ready for the holidays. Her faith is still at the heart of everything she does. Because all the people just think it's Santa Claus on Christmas. It's <laughs> not Santa Claus. It's, it's Jesus. It's maybe Jesus who came to the earth. But she says that her prayers for President Trump have not yet been answered over this past year. The stories of deportations, the uncertainty around DACA, they weigh heavily on Sonia. Her application for citizenship, her papers as she calls them, are still in the pipeline. The taxes, they are working in the taxes, everybody talk about the taxes, but they don't do the same with the people that don't have papers. I mean, it's, it's really sad because some people like me, just we came to work. Aquí mira, In the meantime, she's grateful that her business continues to grow. Her son, Noel, chips in from time to time. It's for him, Sonia says, that she works as hard as she does, that she remains as hopeful as she does. So what about President Trump makes you think that he will help? Because I know he's worried about the economy and the people that need the papers, if they are legal, they can do more for the country. I'm, I have my expectations high to the Trump government. It's three years more. And I know he's going to change his mind about it. President Trump and the Republicans on the verge of passing that massive reform. Over at the Quarters home, Steve, his wife Martha, and Buddy sit down to watch the morning news. And also a big welcome to our week. Good morning, George. Over the last year, Steve has been quick to defend his president. His wife, we learn, is an even bigger Trump fan. A few weeks ago, she took a trip to New York. I got to pick one thing, and mine was to go to Trump Tower. That was the one place you wanted to go? Uh, the one place I wanted to go. The porters stay on top of the national headlines, but they take issue with how some stories are reported, like special counsel Robert Mueller's investigation. One channel says he's going to fire him on Tuesday, and one channel says he can't fire him. So who do you believe? I don't think he's going to fire him. You don't? No. What about you? I think he's going to leave him alone. And I think he's going to find that there's no collusion between Trump prior to the election uh, and the Russians. I, I don't think there's any, um, what do you call it, smoking gun. If they would just leave him alone, the greatness in him would come out. But when it comes to the stories of sexual misconduct, the porters aren't sure who to support, the women speaking up or the men who stand accused. That includes President Trump. I'm sure with his 
wealth. He could get anybody he wanted. But so that means you don't believe them. It's pretty hard to uh, just take people at face value uh, nowadays. So I'll say you again, know, you women don't. Are capable you of don't lying. believe them. The problem that Martha and I have with this is that in this country, we've always believed that people were innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Do you think that those women's claims should be investigated? Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Uh, that's part of due process of law. But if that's true about the women who's, who've accused the president. I separate it from being president. He is to be the leader of the United States. They knew that, supposedly, before they elected him. They sure did. But you knew that as well. So I did. You, you were able to set it aside and not make it a factor. Well, I knew what Hillary's husband was accused of. But I'm of. asking you about who actually won. <laughs> I figured he had the ability to make America great again. I think he's had a hard year, but I think things are better. Martha heads out for the day. Steve and I keep chatting over coffee. As someone for whom your core Christian values are so important, mm -hmm. how do you reconcile that with some of the things that this president says and does? Our presidents have been men that have faults and failures. And the one we have right now is no different from ones we've had before. He probably is in a way like John Wayne. John Wayne said, never say you're sorry, it's a sign of weakness. Steve knows it's been a tough first year for the president. He says it's been a tough year for Trump supporters too. And he shares, it's been a tough year for him personally. We talk about politics, we've talked about history, we've talked about race, we've talked about sexism. What's that been like for you? All during this year, I've been battling physical ailment. So that when y'all came, it made me stop thinking about myself and start thinking about bigger things than self. Is that a good thing or a bad oh, thing? Oh, I think it's a very good thing. You know, everybody's saying 2017 is the worst year ever. And I'm like, I kind of take offense to that because it's the best year ever for me. You know, my babies were born this year and it's been the best year. So Erin's keeping up with a full-time job, two growing babies, and a few headlines when she can. Proud I get it from CNN, Fox, I get it through Reddit, I get it through Facebook. Facebook. For Erin's husband Chad, the holidays are crunch time on the ranch. He's stepping into his busiest stretch of the year. You don't know about anything that's happening in the rest of the world. I don't know about anything that happens. The, the feed truck, the radio quit working in the feed truck I drive. So you're really cut So off. I have absolutely no idea what's going on. But there's a story that hits home for Erin. As a young woman, she had her own Me Too moment. I've been in that situation. I know how it feels, and I know how it feels to not to be scared to say something. But it seems like in politics and everywhere else, it doesn't, they're not held accountable, so. Well, now there have been members of Congress, right? Yeah. Who've resigned, who've been yes. forced out from coming yes. forward. Yes, yes, I think it's great. I don't think that they should be um, especially able to hold an office like that um, that's very powerful. Um, when you're a disgusting pervert, for lack of a better term, you know? Well, so. by the same token, do you think that the allegations against the president should be investigated? Yeah. But the thing is, like, if they're investigated, like, what's going to happen? Probably nothing. But very soon, something could happen with another issue Aaron cares about. So, tax reform could very well happen by Christmas. That's what we really wanted this whole time. It was our big um, issue. My wife and I, along with our family, are people of faith, people that, you know, try to do good, that have to get up every morning and work our tails off all day long to make things happen and make ends meet. Life's not easy here in the Texas Panhandle. Are you so glad to be done with us? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy your company. <laughs> Over at Mitchell and Ashley's, meanwhile, the expecting parents are enjoying a little nesting. Wait, these are your old baby oh, boobs? Yes. Oh, really? So, and some of them are David's that we found 
Like this one. No way. Yes. Mitchell's dad's. Yes. Ashley is now just over oh, four wow. months pregnant. The twins are due in May. There's, There's a boy. boy in there. So there might yeah. be, so we, what we don't know now is if the second one's a girl or, or if it's two boys. boys. I felt a little empty, you know, when watching all your friends and family have children around you and everything and then you not being able to do it. And I know my wife felt this even worse than I did. And it finally happened, and so now it's pretty nice. They're relieved, Mitchell says, that their struggle to start a family is finally behind them. But there's no relief in sight when it comes to the future of the family business. Back in Washington, D.C., Congress is set to see through President Trump's promise of sweeping tax reform. Over the next two days, this is what happens. Without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. The Tax Cuts and Jobs Act is passed. We are making America great again. You haven't heard that, have you? But the plan they pass doesn't repeal the estate tax a move that would have secured Mitchell and his family's future. Instead, it doubles the exemption, and only for eight years. At least they're trying, I guess. I don't put that much faith in them actually in anything happening with it. Your family business is mm -hmm. still not safe. No. It's no more safe today than it was before you voted. Mm-hmm. How does that make you feel? Like it has for the last 15 years we've been trying to figure it out. We'll keep dealing with it the way we have been, trying to figure out how we're going to get past it. Would you still vote for him today, knowing everything you know? I've got other things out of it. I've got a, a Supreme Court candidate I like. Reductions in uh, regulations and things like that. And things haven't gotten worse for us. And they would have gotten worse the other way. But well, when you look back just at the first year, how you've processed it, what comes to mind? Meh. Is that the word? <laughs> no. Uh, that a is spelled M-E-H? M-E-H, yeah. Okay. It's like, well... Nothing's burned down yet. Like, you know, like nothing's caught fire yet. We're still okay. I mean, we'll see. See how next year goes. So what did we see during our year in Roberts County? Well, a tight-knit community in a quiet and frankly beautiful corner of the country where the generations that came before matter just as much as the ones ahead. See, that's what led so many people here to vote for Donald Trump in the first place. He offered them a chance to preserve this way of life, or possibly even make it a little bit better. President Trump's first year may have meant uncertainty for some communities in America, but the fact is, this wasn't one of them. Life in Roberts County doesn't change much over time, and for people who live here, that suits them just fine.